Strange facts about Cleopatra you didn't know. Cleopatra died over 2,000 years ago, but she is still remembered as one of history's most fascinating women. The Egyptian queen was famous for her beauty and intellect, and her short but scandalous life inspired many works of art, literature, and film. Because of her romantic relationships with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, Cleopatra is frequently portrayed as a femme fatale. She wasn't just a seductress, though. Cleopatra was one of history's most successful and powerful queens. During her reign, which lasted from 51 to 30 BC, she brought peace and prosperity to a country that had been bankrupt and divided by civil war. Here are 10 surprising facts about Cleopatra, the queen of the Nile. Number 1. Cleopatra married two of her brothers. Cleopatra was married to Ptolemy XIII, her brother and co-ruler, who was 10 years old at the time, and she was 18. Ptolemy attempted to depose his sister in 48 BC, forcing her to flee to Syria and Egypt. Cleopatra married Ptolemy XIV after Ptolemy XIII died after being defeated by her Roman Egyptian armies. He was 12 and she was 22. Cleopatra continued to live with Caesar privately and act as his mistress during their marriage. In 32 BC, she married Mark Antony. Cleopatra was captured by Octavian's army after Antony surrendered and committed suicide after being defeated by him. According to legend, Cleopatra had an asp smuggled into her room and let it bite her, poisoning and killing her. Number 2. She was a strong and successful leader. Egypt was the richest nation in the Mediterranean during her reign, and it was the last to remain independent of the rapidly expanding Roman Empire. Cleopatra developed Egypt's economy and used trade with Arab nations to elevate Egypt's status as a world power. Number 3. She was in Rome when Caesar was killed. Cleopatra was Caesar's mistress in Rome at the time of his assassination in 44 BC. His assassination put her own life in danger, so she fled across the Tiber with their young son. Cleopatra took immediate steps to consolidate her rule upon her return to Egypt. She poisoned her brother Ptolemy XIV and replaced him with her son, Ptolemy XV, Caesarian. Number 4. Cleopatra was not Egyptian. Cleopatra was born in Egypt, but her ancestors came from Macedonia and Ptolemy I Soter, one of Alexander the Great's generals. Following Alexander's death in 323 BC, Ptolemy established a dynasty of Greek-speaking rulers that lasted nearly three centuries. Despite not being of Egyptian origin, Cleopatra embraced many of her country's ancient customs and was the first member of the Ptolemaic line to learn Egyptian. Number 5. Cleopatra's beauty wasn't her biggest asset. Cleopatra was portrayed in Roman propaganda as a debauched temptress who used her sex appeal as a political weapon, but she may have been more famous for her intellect than her appearance. She was educated in mathematics, philosophy, oratory, and astronomy and spoke up to a dozen languages. Egyptian sources later described her as a ruler, who elevated the ranks of scholars and enjoyed their company. There is also evidence that Cleopatra was not as physically attractive as previously thought. Coins featuring her portrait depict her with manly features and a large, hooked nose, though some historians believe she purposefully portrayed herself as masculine to demonstrate her strength. Plutarch, for one, claimed that Cleopatra's beauty was not entirely incomparable, and that it was her mellifluous speaking voice and irresistible charm that made her so desirable. Number 6. Cleopatra knew how to make an entrance. Cleopatra saw herself as a living goddess, and she frequently used stagecraft to entice potential allies and reinforce her divine status. Her flair for the dramatic was on display in 48 BC, when Julius Caesar arrived in Alexandria during her feud with her brother Ptolemy XIII. Cleopatra knew Ptolemy's forces would prevent her from meeting with the Roman general, so she had herself wrapped in a carpet and smuggled into his personal quarters. The sight of the young queen in her royal robes dazzled Caesar, and the two quickly became allies and lovers. Cleopatra later used a similar bit of theater in her encounter with Mark Antony in 41 BC.
She is said to have arrived in Tarsus on a golden barge adorned with purple sails and rowed by silver oars when summoned to meet the Roman triumvir. Cleopatra had been transformed into the goddess Aphrodite, and she sat beneath a gilded canopy with attendants dressed as cupids fanning her and burning sweet-smelling incense. Antony, who saw himself as the embodiment of the Greek god Dionysus, was immediately enchanted. Number 7. Cleopatra and Mark Antony formed their own drinking club. In 41 BC, Cleopatra began her legendary love affair with the Roman general Mark Antony. Their relationship had a political component. Cleopatra required Antony to protect her crown and keep Egypt independent, while Antony required access to Egypt's riches and resources, but they were also famously fond of each other's company. They spent the winter of 41 to 40 BC in Egypt living a life of leisure and excess, according to ancient sources, and even formed their own drinking society known as the Inimitable Livers. The group held nightly feasts and wine binges, and its members occasionally participated in elaborate games and competitions. One of Antony and Cleopatra's favorite pastimes was said to be going around Alexandria in disguise and playing pranks on the locals. Number 8. She led a fleet in a naval battle. Cleopatra eventually married Mark Antony and had three children with him, but their marriage caused a huge scandal in Rome. Antony's rival, Octavian, used propaganda to portray him as a traitor swayed by a scheming seductress, and the Roman Senate declared war on Cleopatra in 32 BC. The following year, a famous naval battle at Actium brought the conflict to a close. Several dozen Egyptian warships were personally led into the fray alongside Antony's fleet, but they were no match for Octavian's navy. The battle quickly devolved into a rout, forcing Cleopatra and Antony to breach the Roman line and flee to Egypt. Number 9. A 1963 movie about her was one of the most expensive movies of all time. The Queen of the Nile has been portrayed on film by Claudette Colbert and Sophia Loren but she is best known for her role as Elizabeth Taylor in the 1963 sword and sandal epic, Cleopatra. The film was plagued by production and script issues, and its budget ballooned from $2 million to $44 million, which included $200,000 just to cover Taylor's costumes. It was the most expensive film ever made at the time of its release, and despite grossing a fortune at the box office, it nearly bankrupted its studio. Even after accounting for inflation, Cleopatra remains one of the most expensive films in history. Number 10. Cleopatra may not have died from an asp bite. After Octavian's forces pursued them to Alexandria in 30 BC, Cleopatra and Antony famously committed suicide. While Antony is said to have stabbed himself in the stomach and died as a result, Cleopatra's method of suicide is less certain. According to legend, she died by luring an asp, most likely a viper or Egyptian cobra, to bite her arm. But Plutarch, the ancient chronicler, admits that what really happened is unknown to no one. Cleopatra was also known to conceal a lethal poison in one of her hair combs, according to him, and the historian Strabo speculates that she may have applied a fatal ointment. Given this, many researchers believe she used a pin dipped in a potent toxin possibly snake venom. Well there, you have our strange facts about Cleopatra you didn't know. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, so you won't miss any future videos.